If one website epitomizes the weird net, it's 4chan. From fake news to fantastic conspiracies, we'll take a look at this infamous image board and dispel a few myths surrounding it. Welcome to the weird net. Given the controversial nature of 4chan and the way it's viewed by most normies, I wanted to start this video by taking a few minutes to present a few facts and ask people to hold back on the knee-jerk reactions. Yes, there's bad people on 4chan, but there's worse and quite probably more of them on Twitter as recent scandals suggest, so maintaining some perspective and rationality is essential when handling such a potentially incendiary subject as this. In an age of pseudo-journalism and hateful suppression of ideas and speech, some websites have had their reputations ruined for their politics or for not taking the right side, but not 4chan. No, 4chan... 4chan took its own reputation, shot on it, doused it in petrol and then set it on fire shortly after coming online. I mean, come on to fuck, even Wikipedia, that bastion of all truth, says that it rose as an alternative to the anime death tentacle rape whore house sub forum on something awful. Expecting anything approaching political correctness makes as much sense as expecting the Daily Stormer to run a story praising Ben Shapiro or expecting Buzzfeed to acknowledge the basics of reality. The vast majority of users are shit posters and trolls looking to get a reaction by using political correctness against itself or deliberately using the most shocking imagery that they can find. They create hoaxes where they lead people to believe stuff like milk is a white nationalist symbol and like complete fucking idiots, people fall for it. It's what they've been doing for years. Whether it was raiding the Habo Hotel or organising protests against Scientology, 4chan has always been at the centre of the chaos and has been responsible for popularising many modern day memes as well as political ideologies as we'll see shortly. Now, it would be naive to believe that there isn't and hasn't been some horrifying shit on 4chan. I have been on and off it since it started and have participated in all manner of raids so I'm intimately familiar with it and I've seen how they deal with illegal content. In every case I've seen, the post is removed by one of the 20 plus admins within minutes. More often than not, it's posted by some fucking edgy boy who thinks it's funny until anons locate them and report them to the police. Creeps are routinely hounded out and stuff like bomb threats or mass shooters are passed to the police, typically with considerable additional evidence sourced by users. So, contrary to popular belief, the anons of 4chan have done a lot of good stuff as well as all the questionable and downright bad stuff they've done elsewhere. But for all their faults, most people who frequent 4chan are actually fairly decent human beings and aren't basement dwelling neckbeards. Sure, there's arseholes, but there's arseholes everywhere, and while you might not agree with the politics of some of the users, they're free to say their piece, and you're free to criticise them for it. But enough of the preamble, I'm not turning this into a commentary channel or anything. I just wanted to basically make a case that 4chan isn't quite the cesspool you're led to believe it is. Oh, it's got a lot of shite on it, obviously, but before you criticise gore and questionable political views, go search Tumblr, a site synonymous with social justice and intersectionality, for such wonderful family-friendly tags as Rape Bay or Bug Chaser. Also, Consider the fact that 4chan bans entire IP ranges for posting illegal content, while Twitter seems to believe 12 hour account bans are sufficient punishment. Anyway. In October 2003, a 14 year old calling himself Moot set up 4chan as his own English language version of a popular Japanese image board known as 2chan. Initially bringing people from the at one time hilarious Something Awful forums, the site provided anonymous posting, 
ever-changing random content and a free speech forum where people could be as vile or as virtuous as they pleased. While it all started with only one board, the now legendary B, the site grew to support discussion on many topics, from anime to the supernatural. The user base commonly known as Anons grew quickly and due in large part to the anonymity the site provided and the freedom to say otherwise socially unacceptable things. While it's doubtful that the young Moot intended for his website to become what it has, it became something of a hero, and not an hero, that's another story entirely, to an entire community of faceless users across the globe. Eventually his real identity was revealed as Christopher Poole, a vaguely normal high school student from New York with a fascination for Japanese culture and programming. Over the course of 12 years, Moot was the main administrator for the whole site and, along with a rotating cast of programmers and janitors, maintained all aspects of the running, funding and marketing fortune. He became a meme, got the living shit trolled out of him on a near daily basis and took it all in good humour. Due to the intervention and hacking of the voting system by a group of anons, he ended up being voted Time Magazine's Person of the Year in 2008, much to the irritation of many and thus to the satisfaction of the trolls. Now an employee of Google, Moot, like many 4chan users, grew up, and he went on to make a life for himself and his family. He still gets trolled and mocked on the boards, partly due to having sold the site in 2015 to Hiroyuki Nishimura, and partly just for being Moot. As I've mentioned, users of 4chan came to be known as Anons, due to the anonymous posting on the site. Trip codes can be used to allow the identity of the poster to be authenticated, but it's fairly rare for someone to use one identity to post anyway. While IP addresses are exposed normally, some use proxy servers or VPNs to strengthen their anonymity. However, using stuff like Tor will often result in your being blocked due to someone having tried to upload illegal content from that IP range in the past. The practice of hiding your IP address turned into the classic good luck and behind seven proxies meme, mocking those who try to expose the people trolling them either on 4chan or another site online since their location would be obscured behind multiple proxy servers. It was this anonymity that gave rise to one of the most influential groups ever seen online. Anonymous grew from the world of 4chan and went on to accomplish a lot of good things, such as exposing the nefarious practices of Scientology through the Chanology project, to the shutting down of a child porn ring via Operation Darknet entirely without centralised leadership. They came a long way from the early days of raiding Habo Hotel, Rick Rollin and generally making a nuisance of themselves online, but gradually evolved into what the mainstream press referred to as the internet hate machine and hackers on steroids. Adopting the V for Vendetta aesthetic, the mustachioed mask became a symbol of the hive mind present when multiple users worked towards an agreed aim. However, it was this lack of centrality or authority that would lead the name to be used by less than ethical groups with their own agendas, thus soiling what could have been a powerful force for good. We've also seen a number of instances where groups identifying themselves as anonymous have provided entirely false information in connection with crimes, leading to innocent people being harassed and having their livelihood affected through being doxxed incorrectly. At other times, People spoke up claiming to represent Anonymous themselves, only to be shot down for their arrogance, and also often making themselves targets for investigation by law enforcement or secret agencies looking for some insider information. Over time, the group appears to have fractured into warring factions and lost its teeth somewhat. Every so often there will be a YouTube video of somebody claiming to represent the group, dressed in the Guy Fawkes mask with a distorted voice, trying to garner support for some perceived slight against someone they're white knighting for, but they typically end up with a bunch of 12 year old script kiddies trying to DDoS a fucking WordPress site. At one point, Time Magazine hailed Anonymous as one of the 100 most influential people in the world, but now 
it's really just the users of 4chan itself, rather than some self-identified group called Anonymous, who are engaged in bringing people to justice, exposing corruption and also, paradoxically, creating trouble through deliberately offensive black humour and satire. While 4chan's got many boards covering many areas, the bulk of the notable and most controversial content comes from one of two sub-forums, the once notorious B or Random Board, and the now notorious Paul or Politically Incorrect Board. So let's take a closer look at these two digital dens of iniquity. As the first active board on 4chan, B was truly where it all began. Even as the site expanded, B remained popular and became the place to go for trolls, memes, weird cartoon porn and most importantly, the lulls. For those who don't know, lulls, also known as lols or whatever other variant, is basically the modern version of Schadenfreude, taking pleasure in another's misfortune. In this case, usually through having been trolled, embarrassed or exposed online. For the troll, to have done it for the lulls is always an appropriate justification no matter how big the offence. Actual real life legal proceedings don't really seem to take the same view sadly, so generation of lulls isn't an acceptable legal defence as yet. But 4chan didn't only give us the lulls. They evolved an entire language of abbreviations, memes and turned the automatic numbering system of the site into some form of weird divination through gets, dubs, trips and so forth. Such was the idiosyncrasy of the terminology used on 4chan that in 2010, Moot had to give evidence in court as a government witness to explain what terms such as OP and lurker meant during a case. People seem to underestimate just how influential B has been in shaping both internet culture and the way in which we communicate online, whether it's through shit posting or the current political meme wars that can all be traced back to 4chan and the annoyance. Some of the best known work of 4chan includes the now classic Rick Roll, where someone is provided with a link to some salubrious story only to click on it and be confronted with Rick Astley's never gonna give you up. And Catterday, where everyone posts a picture of a cat on a Saturday, which in itself actually originated on something awful and eventually morphed into ever more bizarre memes and imagery with lolcast series. They even created internet celebrities such as Tay Zondi and his infuriatingly catchy Chocolate Rain. They turned TV stars into online cult figures such as Chris, why don't you take a seat over there, Hanson, and generally infected reality with their strain of weird humour. I was going to go deeper into some of the memes popularised on 4chan, but there's just too many to give them enough attention in this video. I may do more meme specific breakdowns in future, but for the moment it's enough to know that 4chan has given the world much more entertainment than many realise. B provided a base from which major trolling efforts, known as raids, were and are conducted. These can vary from staging DDoS attacks on websites via the low orbit ion cannon software, to simply getting a crowd of people to turn up on one website and effectively troll everyone and everything. A personal favourite of mine was the 2006 Pools Close raids, where thousands got together on Habo Hotel, dressed identically and proceeded to block the swimming pools claiming they were closed due to AIDS. Most of the 4chan antics have been humorous and intended to be nothing more than a prank, but there have been instances of more malicious activity, occasionally leading to legal action being taken or sometimes even worse. Now as the most notorious place on 4chan, B has had its fair share of controversy and has attracted several fucked up individuals over the years. Whether it's posting indecent material or confessing to crimes online, B has seen it all, and the majority of the users, me included, have been disgusted more than once by some of the shit that's on there. And while there's a lot of weird and fucked up stuff posted, 99% of it is by edgelords trying to shock people. It's always been that way, 
It's basically like a crowd of teenage boys trying to outgross each other and every so often one crosses the line and gets kicked out of the group. Sure, it's immature but the site gets a bad reputation largely because the users purposely give it one as a way to keep out so called normies from their territory. I mean look at the recent Pepe the Frog story. If you trace it back to where it started, Pepe the feels good man frog created by Matt Fury or Matt Furry or whatever his name is, had been in use on the chance for years and years, rarely in a political sense and even more rarely in any real negative sense, if ever. But when celebrities like Katy Perry started tweeting pictures of what had become a 4chan mascot of sorts, it exposed it to a mainstream audience who, just like they had done with lolcats and every other meme that's had the arse kicked out of it, would basically fucking ruin it for everybody. So rather than letting Pepe fall to the normies, 4chan decided that the ultimate way to deter them from using their mascot would be to tell everyone that Pepe the Frog is actually a symbol for racists. And it fucking well worked. Right now, posting even the rarest of Pepe's will generally create a backlash against you, or at the very least, lose you a few followers on Twitter, but that frog is completely innocent in this whole thing. So while we're on the subject of Pepe, let's take a look at Paul, the more intellectual, political and attention deficit cousin of the beat arts. Paul developed from the original new board in 2011 after an influx of racist discussion led to it being closed down. This should be taken into account when considering its current reputation as a racist hotspot where all the bad guys congregate. Paul is there to replace a board which was shut down for being racist. For all its faults, we can maybe agree that while there are undoubtedly racist statements made by some within its hundreds of thousands of daily users, they're clearly moderated and far less extreme than modern media and the site's detractors would have you believe. This doesn't excuse it, don't get me wrong, but I'd like to maintain some perspective and present the facts for you to investigate for yourself should you wish. Anyway, for the first few years of its existence, the Politically Incorrect board was basically just a political discussion forum with a varied user base. It wasn't until the run up to the 2016 election of President Donald Trump that they came under the spotlight as the Polacks, as they are affectionately known, linked arms against what they saw as a threat to America in the form of Hillary Clinton. Through pushing fake stories online to exposing actual real life corruption in the political system, the annoyance went into attack mode using mimetic weaponry against the double talk and wrong think punishments of the mainstream, predominantly anti-Trump media. As the election unfolded in a way that few predicted, the residents of Paul claimed that their meme magic had contributed to the result and even influenced the president himself. In fairness and in support of their claim, Trump and his son both tweeted Paul originated memes almost as a tip of the hat to the users of 4chan and their efforts. Now, it would be beyond naive to ignore the fact that yes, some people with seriously questionable views on the world use and contribute to Paul, or to ignore the clear right wing and or centrist bias present on the site. At the same time, just because these people believe what I and many others may consider to be objectionable things, doesn't make them all monsters. Sure, there are people with racist and sexist views there, but I would argue there are far more on Twitter alone, particularly if we rightly consider the racist and often violent anti-white rhetoric seen on there daily. In other words, Paul, just like the rest of 4chan and the rest of the internet, simply reflects one aspect of humanity and our infinite potential to be either good people or utter fucking dicks to each other. But it's through controversy, debate and freedom of speech that we can identify those who are being fucking dicks and those who are actually willing to discuss topics that, especially in today's current climate, really need to be discussed. Places like Paul, Gab or AI and Wrongthink offer freedom of speech to people of all belief systems, whatever their orientation and without censorship. They don't allow illegal content and since I think that this is a point worth reiterating if we're to take a serious honest look at these sites, all of them 
act far more quickly and with far more severity than most social media websites in the event of such material arising. So yes, Paul has a largely right-wing, alt-right or whatever the fuck they're calling themselves these days user base. Yes, there's fierce and open speech, often offensive to those soaked in politically correct ideologies and sometimes downright disgusting even to the most open-minded of people. In most cases, as I've mentioned regarding B, the most extreme content, especially anything involving race or Nazis, usually involves shitposting teenagers trying to fit in with what they see as the cool crowd. 4chan is almost certainly the first port of call for any wannabe troll when they get online. So, given the current political climate and the ease with which a reaction can be had simply by wearing a fucking red hat, it makes sense that all the edgy boys and wannabe Milo's would congregate on pole and let loose. One of the most intriguing creations from 4chan, amplified via pole, is the cult of Keck and this whole Kekistan thing, which I'll be doing an entirely separate video on. I mean, after all, what's more weird than than an online movement based around an Egyptian fucking frog god? So. I'm only going to give it a brief mention here as it's a complex topic that really deserves more attention. In short, after years of using Pepe the Frog to express themselves and having popularised the weird, mangled Korean via gaming via lol speak word kek, the channels found that the Egyptians once had a god, who was a frog, and who was called kek. More synchronicities occurred as a song appeared called Shadily by an Italian band called Pepe who, on the vinyl of the single, had a big green fucking frock. And this became adopted as an anthem of sorts by the followers of Kek who call themselves Kekistanis and engage in all manner of shit posting across numerous social platforms. As I've said, I'll go into this whole carry on in this own video, but for the moment, praise Kek. This is probably another topic that deserves its own video because, whether it's a live action roleplay or not, it's weird as fuck and it's got that classic conspiracy that might be true thing about it that's really quite hard to pull off. I just wanted to touch briefly on it as it's its own thing and it veers off into territory that's way beyond the remit of the weird net, but it still stands as an oddity in itself. To cut a long story short, some unknown claiming high level government clearance and referring to themselves as Q, which as you'll probably know is reminiscent of a James Bond character, has been leaving cryptic posts regarding some sort of behind the scenes activity involving President Donald Trump and what appears to be the proverbial swamp he promised to drain. From what I can gather so far from my admittedly limited knowledge regarding both Q and on, and even more limited knowledge of politics, the narrative being woven seems to be that there's some good versus evil battle going on at the highest levels of power and that Trump is what's been referred to as the storm. It all reads like a spy story or some sort of ARG or something but nobody seems to have figured out exactly what it is or what it's really about. There's been speculation that it may be someone like Steve Bannon but again my knowledge of politics here really limits me, so I've no idea whether that's even remotely plausible. The weirdness of it all has been the apparent consistency with which specific events have been predicted by QAnon, as well as odd things like Q using a bizarre plus plus code on a post on 4chan, only to have President Trump inexplicably end one of his own tweets with the same plus plus literally minutes later. All in all, the Q and on story is a beast unto itself, but I felt it would be silly to leave it out as it's both weird and genuinely intriguing. More importantly, it's all happening on 4chan. So if it <laughs> turns out to be some sort of unique, legitimate, president approved method of collaboration with his supporters and, as he claims is doing, draining the swamp, then it would mean that, for better or for worse, the site would have approval and become something completely different. Who knows, I'm just an observer from across the sea, so my opinion on Trump has no relevance, but I'm intrigued to see how this almost Shakespearean story will play out. For 
those of you who actually give a shit about my political leanings or who, after this video, think I'm either alt-right or an alt-right sympathiser, I can only assure you that this is not the case. My politics are completely irrelevant to the content that I make, but since I've basically tried to make a balanced case for why 4chan, B and Paul aren't actually the complete cesspools of intolerance and hatred they're made out to be, I know that some are going to make assumptions or suggest that I'm in some way supportive of their political aims. For the record, my own beliefs, according to most online tests, is slightly left of centre. Aside from that, I don't particularly care, and since I just make videos online about weird stuff on the internet, it shouldn't even be something that I need to bring up on this channel at all. I just know though that a potentially controversial topic like 4chan, especially Paul and not presenting it as a hive of Nazis, is likely to lead some of false conclusions about me or this channel. But anyway, my ranting aside in this political age where farts aren't just seen as oppressive in the olfactory sense, back to the main subject. As we've seen, 4chan is a diverse entity, with everyone from shit posters to shills occupying an ever-changing series of threads, memeing hard, trolling harder, and lurking more. There are obviously far more sub-forums than just B and Paul, but for one, it'd take too fucking long to go through them, and secondly, I only ever really frequented B, so I can't speak much for any of the other boards, but there's something there for pretty much everyone. There are other chans such as 8chan, but they're another subject for another time, and 4chan really is the place where most of the actions happened online since 2003. Since Moot's sale on the site, it appears to have gone through some major difficulties. I'd like to see it stick around though, because it's a great source of truly weird clips and strange stories. Even if you don't agree with their politics or the crude, deliberately offensive behaviours of some people, I know ultimately it's the users who make a site what it is, and that the users of 4chan have wreaked havoc across the internet. Nobody's making excuses for this, or claiming that 4chan is a clean, family-friendly website, but it's always one user among millions and so it's unfair to tar the entire place with the same brush. Most 4chan users, as I've said, are pretty good, they're at least vaguely normal people, and they've done a lot of good stuff over the years. I hope that this small effort to present at least a fairly neutral overview of the site and the two most infamous boards will go some way in allowing people to see the site for what it is, rather than buying into the hyperbole about it being a Nazi hideaway. Some areas of the site have an alt-right or maybe even a far-right leaning, big fucking deal. Other sites have got a hard left extremist leaning too, and both are equally fucking <laughs> objectionable to me personally, but you know what? I'd rather have both sides be permitted to voice their opinions without violence or physical altercation, so that more people can see beyond what they're being fed by their social media, the bought and paid for news agencies and their subtitled talking heads on every screen. Unless we can hear bad ideas, we can't combat them with good ideas. We can't force people to agree, it just doesn't fucking work, it leads to more problems because then people hide their ideas away. Disgusting them away from the modern day thought police, allowing them to fester, grow, and spread unseen. That is how we end up in deep fucking shit. And that's the way things are headed, unless we stand up for free speech and, twisted as it seems, allow morons to be morons. Because with freedom of speech comes the responsibility of accepting the consequences, good or bad. Whether we like it or not, we're responsible for ourselves. And if we want to speak up, then we need to be able to deal with the fallout if what we say is ob just objectionable to others. We can learn by listening, watching, reading, and just not being fucking arseholes to each other. But until we start allowing all their voices to be heard, we're just going to push bad ideas into a far worse place. We have to be our own filler and learn how to tune out the shit we don't need in our lives. Human existence is too fucking short to hate people and carry that weight, but if people can vent and then learn to see why their opinion's unhelpful to them, then surely that's better for everyone. Thanks for watching. 
My apologies if this one got too political or anything. Free speech is something that I'm passionate about and I believe 4chan is somewhere that exemplifies free speech in its best and worst forms. I really appreciate you sticking around until the end. I know this has been a lot longer than my usual videos, but I'm sure you'll understand why I felt the need to really go into this in as much detail. Have a very Merry Christmas, or whatever, or however you're celebrating at this time of year. Keep it weird, and be excellent to each other.